وان شاء الله ترجع امورنا تمام ونرجع لحياتنا الطبيعيه في كل الدول في العالم اجمع وبخص بالذكر الدول اللي عرفت. هلا بس رح اعمل انتروداكشن صغيره بعد اذنكم عن اجون للناس اللي اول مره بيكونوا معنا اجون شركه اردنيه احنا بنشتغل بال كانفراستراكشر للصناعه الدوائيه احنا بنقدم سيرفيسز تكنيكال سيرفيسز لمصانع ومستودعات شركيه الهيد كوارتر تبعنا بعمان بس احنا عندنا ريجنال اوت ريتش اكثر بنشتغل في السعوديه بنشتغل في مصر في الاردن في فلسطين وبنعتبر هاي اسواق رئيسيه من جديد كمان العراق صار بالنسبه لنا بين اربيل وبين بغداد بنقدم خدماتنا بعمودين اساسيات موضوع الكومبلاينس احنا بنساعد الشركات كومبلاينس ريكويرمنت ريجوليشن من شركات ما عندها ولا شيء بدها تقدر لا شركات موجود عندها سيستم وذي ونت كومبلاي مع الريكويرمنت الجديده والتعديلات اللي عم تصير في الجايد لاين كلكم عارفين التعديلات كثير كثير في الجايد لاين متعلقه بالصناعه الدوائيه اتركوا الذكر بلس انه احنا بنقدم خدمات في موضوع البارماتيكال انجينيرنج بنقدم خدمات زي الكوميكيشن ثيرمال مابينج دراسات الريسك اسسمنت على دراسات اليوتيلايزيشن ستدي ودراسات الريسك اسسمنت على اليوتيلتيز وتعديلاتها تعديلات الديزاين بلس انه احنا بنقدر نساعدكم من مرحله ما يكون المشروع لسه بده فيزابيليتي ستدي وماركت ريسيرش اند فيرذر اون هذا احنا في اجون آه آه عندنا تواجد جيد الحمد لله في السعوديه ومعظم دول الخليج مغطيين الاردن وفلسطين وعندنا اوبريشن لطيفه لها عمرها ثلاث سنوات في مصر واحنا كثير مبسوطين فيها عملنا بروجكت بالسودان وبالعراق زي ما حكيت من قبل وبالجزائر آه بصراحه الويبينار اليوم كثير كثير قريب لقلبي وكثير كثير انا بعتز لاكثر من سبب واحد من اهم الاسباب انه عرفنا على دكتور عبد الرحمن قبل ما احكي الاشياء العلميه وال... وال... واللي مكتوبه في البايو تبع الدكتور واعرفكم فيه بحب احكي لكم انه دكتور عبد الرحمن فاجئني انا شخصيا بكونه واحد من اكثر الشخصيات اللي انا قابلتها تنظيما عقله كثير منظم وعارف شو بيشتغل بالضبط وفاهم موضوع الانفكشن كنترول بطريقه كثير علميه وهذا كان فيري امبرسيف بالنسبه لي انا شخصيا ولفريق اجون واعطانا دفعه كثير كبيره وساعدنا كثير نفكر بموضوع الانفكشن كنترول بطريقه صح وبطريقه منطقيه وبطريقه علميه وحسب الاصول فانا يعني برفع له القبعه لانه فعلا فاهم هو شو بيشتغل ودارسه ومشتغل بشكل كثير كبير على حاله بدي احكي عنه بشكل علمي الدكتور عبد الرحمن محمود هو انفكشن اند بريفنشن اند كنترول كونسلتنت هو انترناشونال اكريديتيشن ادفايزر فور هيلث كير انستيتيوشنز واكريديتد فروم كلينيكال لاب ستاندرد انستيتيوت فور كواليتي مانجمنت سيستم الدي تي كيو ام وهو كلينيكال باثوجست ساينتست ام بي اي كارديف متروبوليتان يونيفرستي بروجريشن عنده اكثر من 20 سنه اكسبيرينس بالفيلد اوف كلينيكال لابراتوريز والانفكشن كنترول وعنده هو هاز بين ان اكريديتيشن ادفايزر لتسع سنين سيرتيفايد من السي بي اي هو انستراكتور للسي اي تي سي بي اي تي والامريكان انستيتيوت اوف هيلث كير كواليتي هو انترناشونال اسوشيت ممبر اوف ذا ابيك اسوشيشن بروفيشنال ان ذا انفكشن كنترول اند ايبيدولوجي بصراحه الدكتور كثير رح يفيدنا ورح يبسط لنا الموضوع كثير ورح يعطينا الخلاصه في هذا الويبينار بس كمان بحب الفت انتباه كل الناس اللي موجوده معنا انه احنا بنقدم سيرفيسز متعلقه في الانفكشن كنترول حتى يكون يتحول لسيستم حقيقي عندكم في الشركات مش مجرد فزعه عم بجيب فيها بعض الناس وبشتغل بعض الشغل اللي انا مش كثير واعي لاساسياته ومنهجيته كيف لازم يتم هاي نقطه فاحنا بنقدر نساعدكم شوي اذا بتحبوا والموضوع الثاني وهو الاهم انه احنا رح نبلش سلسله من التدريبات مع الدكتور عبد الرحمن مواضيع مختلفه ومتقدمه للناس اللي حابه تطور كثير موضوع الانفكشن كنترول تتعامل معها بشكل علمي وتدرب نفسها وتاخذ اكريديتيشن وشهادات برحب فيك دكتور وبشكرك كثير على جهودك واهلا وسهلا فيك معنا الميكروفون معك انا هلا ما لي دور لاخرج ويبينار تفضل متشكر جدا يا دكتور داتا كل سنه وانتم طيبين ومتشكر جدا على ان انتم رمضان ابتديتوا تضيفوا في ذا اونلاين اديوكيشن بسبب موضوع الحظر اللي كل العالم دلوقتي عايش فيه. و اي ثينك ات از ا فيري جود اوبورتونيتي تو اول اوف اس ان احنا تو انكريز اور نولج تو اكسبيند اور مايند اند دايمنشنز اوف انديرستاندينج اباوت تو ماني توبكس نوت اونلي انفكشن كونترول. بس اوف كورس 
one of the most important topics على الساحة دلوقتي موضوع الانفكشن uh, كنت يمكن الفترة اللي فاتت كلها من حوالي لو نقدر نقول من بالظبط 2010 او 2012 في العالم العربي كله ابتدت ابتدى العالم العربي ياخد باله من موضوع حاجه اسمها انفكشن ده ابتدى مع ال... من من 2009 في السوين فلو في السعوديه وعلى مستوى العالم وبعد كده لما جه الميرس كو في في السعوديه بس كانت 95% من الحالات بتاعت الميرس كو في السعوديه بس موجوده اند باي ذا واي الفتاليتي ريت بتاع الميرس كو في كان كل ثلاثه واحد بيموت يعني الجرافيتي اوف ذا ديزيز كانت فيري جريت وبعدين دخلنا دلوقتي بقى على موضوع كورونا فايروس از ا مايلد اليس نوت سو سيفير لكن فيري فيري هايلي انفكشنس فالفكره جت ان احنا عندنا انفكشن كنترول بروجرام موجود من زمان قوي بس زي ما بنقول ايه هيستوريك بمعنى ان هو كان ابتدى حاجات صغيره حاجات بسيطه وابتدى يتطور مع كل ما مع العالم بيواجه حاجه جديده او ديزاستر جديده او نوليدج بيزيد جديد وزي ما بيقولوا طبعا ايه الحاجه ام الاختراع طالما احنا اتزنقنا او اتحطينا في كارثه هنبتدي نفكر كويس نتعشى من الله سبحانه وتعالى ان بعد الموضوع بتاع الكوفيد 19 او الايرا اوف كوفيد 19 دي فات ان شاء الله نبقى احسن كتير في موضوع الانفكشن فيه. So my topic today is about specifically designed IPC code. Uh, I need you to, 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 to concentrate on the objectives, the slides, and the presentation. Okay, so I, I, you have, by the end of this presentation, you are going to understand what does it mean to have a program, and what do we mean by infection control program. Uh, second, uh, do we actually need an infection control program or not? Uh, what are the differences between healthcare associated infections and closed formula infections? Uh, the current definition is sufficient to fulfill all our needs. We apply IPC programs everywhere or only at hospitals. Do our community need wide-scale programs focusing on all aspects of life, eating, drinking, shopping, laundry, sports, cleaning, innovations for a process for a system? Um, we have. We are going to talk also about what does it mean to by the public health. Uh, do we have a strong relationship between the public health and infection control? Uh, do we have any preventive measures in place, or only we think to control? Meaning, what? We are not going to do anything. We are just going to think that when the virus is going to how to control this and that. And what we think good preventive measures really work. Uh, and finally, it's a big question. I think uh, no one knows the answer about it. Are we in control or not? So, background of the infection control program. Uh, infection control programs have evolved significantly over the, over the past 50 years. Uh, programs are affected by professional and non profit organizations, government, regulatory accrediting agencies and scientific research and publications. Uh, definition of the IPC programs still defective. Started when patients reach hospital with all the arrival privileges. Okay. Uh, meaning what we are going to do is we are going to program with us and we are going to get to the hospital. But before that, we are going to get to the hospital. We are going to get to the hospital. Uh, IPC program restrictions, and mainly it is present in hospitals and all healthcare institutions. So, can you in our what do we mean by a program? Uh, a program is a plan of action aimed at accomplishing clear business objectives with details on what work is to be done, by whom, when, and what means or resources will be. Another definition says that a program is a set of instructions may, uh, that anyone can follow in order to perform a particular task. The chances of an error occurring in a program increases with the size of the program. And therefore, it, of course, it needs more complex and more experienced staff. 
uh, some definitions also about what is hazard and what is risk, so to know uh, what we are going to, to discuss. A hazard is any source of potential damage, a harm or other adverse health effects on something or someone, like patients, healthcare workers, or community members visiting the healthcare facility under any, any certain conditions. A hazard identification is the process of finding, listing, and characterizing hazards. So, after that, risk is the chance or probability that a person will be harmed or experience an adverse health effect if exposed to a hazard. So, we, have, we, are, we need to clearly differentiate between what is hazard and what is risk. And as for hazard identification, we have risk assessment. And it is the process of identifying infection hazards and analyzing and evaluating the risk associated with these hazards with the goal of determining appropriate ways to eliminate or control them. So after that, what is the infection control program? We define program, we define hazard and risk, what is hazard identification, what is risk assessment. So now we need to identify what do we mean by infection control program. IPC program refers to policies and procedures implemented to control and minimize the dissemination of infections in hospitals and other healthcare settings with the main purpose of reducing infection rates. Um, this is the old definition and as you see it is only restricted to hospitals and other healthcare settings. So I think this is an old version it needs to be modified immediately. Uh, another definition or differentiation between what we mean by healthcare associated infection, non reformian infections, and community acquired infections. Uh, it is actually it is a very important uh, differentiation. Um, health, uh, healthcare associated infections happen as a result of being cared for a certain health complaint. It means what the patient is going to the hospital for a healthy care. If he got infection, as an outcome of that healthcare, it is called healthcare as a distributed infection. But what is nosocomial infection? A nosocomial infection happens just due to your presence in the hospital. And you, for example, I, uh, I went with my wife, my father, my colleague uh, for an examination. I am the patient. If I got the infection as a result of healthcare, during the healthcare process, this means what it is healthcare as a distributed infection. But only by, by my presence in the hospital, I received an infection, it's called nosocomial infection. I, uh, the third one, community acquired infection. Uh, of course, the infection is acquired anywhere in the community. Let's go to the attributes for effective infection prevention and control program. A uh, designated staff member who is responsible and accountable for IPC at the facility. Competent IPC leaders with appropriate training and education, uh, formal authority granted to the IPC program, uh, tangible support from uh, facility leadership, adequate resources for IPC activities, uh, partnership with key stakeholders and frontline health care workers, effective communication about the IPC. So as you see, all these elements are uh, very essential to have an effective IPC program. Uh, and of course, as you see, it is, uh, it is not by the IPC team only. It needs support from the leadership and giving authority and financial resources and resources. Okay, why established IPC program? Why the world established IPC program? Uh, these kinds of programs began in hospitals in the mid 50s, uh, concurrent with the growth of intensive care and increasing staff infection uh, in the USA. Of course, uh, extended in 2000 of hospitals in the late 60s and 70s, in response to urging from various organizations like the American Hospital Association and the Joint Commission International. So, um, in the decades of uh, since the 70s, changes. Uh, to these programs have occurred as a result of state and federal agencies, professional and non-profit organizations. So, 
we, we need to establish a program due to two major components. First, we have an increasing number of infections. We have an increasing need to treat infections that was not present before. This is from the inside from persons. But what if the institution or the hospital or the healthcare facility is not inside from anymore? At this time, it should be forced by governmental organizations. Uh, the role of the government is very crucial in, in implementing ICC. Uh, the 21st century both increased the attention to infection prevention and control programs. Why? Because of government interest and oversight and activities of patient safety organizations. So the more we know, the more we get over. And uh, as you see, uh, for example, at the era of swine flu and MERS TB, uh, of course, uh, they were more fatter than coronavirus, but the publicity and the precautionary measures, the, the control measures, the outbreak measures. At these times, at, at the time of coronavirus, very much increased and totally surpassed uh, all the precautions that happened before in Summer's Party or even in Swine. Uh, secondly, increasing attitude patients, uh, aging of the population. Uh, as, we, as science uh, developed and evolved, between now and then, uh, the lifespan of all populations become increased. And uh, especially, of course, in, in, the, in the developed countries like Europe and the States, so you find uh, and in certain, uh, certain countries in Asia, also like Japan, you find uh, that the lifespan you find one person like 140 years. So the mid age is now 100 years in Japan. Uh, and this leads to another era like long term and elderly caring for, for elderly caring uh, of the staff. So, uh, complexity and application of treatment and interventions and the increasing need toward care in home and ambulance system. This is for the elderly and the critical. As, as I said, the more we know, the more we get involved. Certain influences uh, happen to affect. Uh, the decision to implement an infection control program, one of uh, the most important influences uh, was the Department of Health and Human Services Roadmap for Healthcare Associated Infection Elimination. This, outlined, uh, this roadmap was outlined in 2008. It focused on four programs to significantly reduce harm, but in hospitals also and improve care across healthcare systems. As, as we are going to uh, discover when uh, the slides goes on, that everything used to focus on the hospital and healthcare facilities. Uh, and we, we need to ask ourselves the question is that right or wrong? Second, the influences changes in the healthcare industry over the past few decades have placed and increased the demand for an infection prevention and control program. Uh, as an instance, before, uh, as, as an example, before uh, we used to have one or two dialysis uh, machines in the hospital. Now we have whole centers for dialysis and renal transplant. Uh, the third one demands for reporting of that, and this is public reporting of infectious cases. Now we have, as as uh, as uh, I said before, we had. I mean, I, definition of the IT program, and it was totally restricted to healthcare facilities. We have a modern concept now, but uh, in fact, is it truly applied or not? This modern concept of infection prevention and control includes areas beyond healthcare associated infections. Risk to employees, cleaning, maintenance, and evaluation of the physical environment, health policy, and various other adversities. In addition, programs must also address risks to the public, emergency management, education of the community, and use of implementation by institutes. So, this, this uh, modern concept goes beyond the healthcare associated infection that the IPC programs uh, was developed to uh, eliminate uh, the risks. Now, uh, we start to thinking about the environment. What 
are uh, the influences in that environment. The patient, before it was a patient, it is a human, a human being subjected to many uh, environmental factors that led to any disease that led to the infection that led to. So we have to concentrate on that human being before it comes, or before it turns to be a patient or not. Who do you think that the world is alarmed? Who will alarm the world? Uh, and of course, infection prevention professionals need to be alert to changing recommendations, requirements, and new scientific researches and guidelines. They then need to make appropriate modifications to IPC programs. In addition, federal and local state requirements must be done. So, the <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, we said, uh, who do you think in the world is alarmed? Uh, infection prevention professionals need to be alert to changing recommendations, requirements, and new scientific literatures and guidelines. They then need to make appropriate modifications to infection prevention and control programs, in addition to the federal, local, and state requirements must be done. influencing the practice. Uh, the first of one, these organizations, uh, by the way, um, help to put the standards, help to put uh, how you are going to evaluate yourself, help to put uh, specific standards for specific facilities. Uh, and uh, I will, I'm going to enumerate uh, most, uh, most important ones. Uh, the first one is the American Hospital Association published its first edition of infection control in 1968. Uh, the purpose of this manual was to describe elements of an infection prevention and control program that an advisory committee considered essential to the reduction and elimination of the human and economic wastage that results from our failure to prevent those nosocomial infections that are prevalent. So it is essential for the reduction. American Hospital Association makes its uh, golden rule to reduce and eliminate human and economic wastage. And they didn't concentrate on human wastage only, but economic wastage. Uh, due to limited resources, we cannot, also, we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot uh, afford to, 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 to dispense more money that we don't need by in their opinion. And the second one, which I consider the most important one, uh, the EPIC. Uh, EPIC Association for Professionals in Infection Control and Epidemiology uh, was established in 1972 to provide education and training programs. And they are putting the IPC standards and science based information to strengthen and improve the practice of infection prevention. Uh, as you see, EPIC concentrated on the uh, IPC staff, uh, concentrated on the knowledge, the education, and uh, the experience of the uh, staff working in infection prevention of it. And in my opinion, it was, it was a golden phase uh, to build on. Uh, uh, out of this, out of its involvement, it established the Certification Board of Infection Control and Epidemiology in 1981 to administer an infection prevention and control certification program. So to prove that you are uh, a person with a good knowledge and experience to work in the infection control practices, you have to be certified. Uh, one of the most famous, actually, but not the most important, Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Uh, in the 60s, the CDC began recommending that hospitals conduct surveillance. دكتور انا اسفه بس اظني انه السلايد معلقه احنا لساتنا عند الامريكان هوسبيتال اسوسيشن ما بعرف اذا حضرتك قلبت السلايدات بعديها يمكن لو توري شيري يمكن لو توري شيري يور سكرين
شباب اوكي كده انا بالنسبه لي ما تغيرت السكرين دكتور يمكن لازم تشيل الشير يعني تو ستوب شير دكتور ستوب شير بعدين نرجع نشير اجين لانه عندنا معلقه هي تراي ناو دكتور بيز نعم اعمل شير ناو وانا بس ال سامعيني كده؟ سامعينك دكتور بس مش شايفين الشاشة تبعتك أنا برضو على فكرة الشير علق تقريبا فخلينا نساعد أوت عشان لقينا جيم بي عشان نيجي ده أوكي شباب اوكي كده ولا لسه؟ مش شايفين الشاشة لسه دكتور يس دكتور يس دكتور شفنا الشاشة هلا تمام هلا تمام دكتور ايوه اللي بعدها هلا اوكي كنا وقفنا على السلايد في امريكان هوستل اسوسيشن ات ذا فيرست اورجنايزيشن انفلونسنج ذا اي سي سي براكتس وقلنا هي كانت بتركز اكثر على ريديوسنج اند ريدكشن ايميشن اوف هيومن اند ايكونوميك ويست ذات ريتلز فروم اور فيلير تو بريفنت ذو فلوز اوف كوميا انتراكشن ويتش ار تو بريفنت ذا سكند وان ويل بي ايبيك اسوسيشن اوف بروفيشنالز وقلنا هي ركزت اكثر اون بروفايدنج ايديوكيشن تريننج بروجرامز اي بي سي ستاندرز اند ساينس بيزد انفورميشن to strengthen and improve the practice of infection control. So it concentrated and focused on uh, the IPC staff, the individuals that are working uh, in the infection control. And in my opinion, it was a golden phase to build on. Uh, 
the third one, uh, it is a very famous organization, the CDC, but it is not the most important, uh, began recommending that hospitals conduct surveillance, which in, uh, firstly introduced as the sexes, uh, for the occurrence of healthcare associated infection. In Jan 70, the CDC began uh, the National Nosocomial Infection Surveillance System. Uh, one purpose of this program was to monitor the trend of healthcare associated infection rates. Uh, pathogens and antibiotic susceptibility patterns in the United States. Uh, so CDC is uh, only for the States, not for the world. Uh, CDC transitions, uh, transitions uh, in NIS to a web-based knowledge system, uh, which is the Nas National Healthcare Safety Network, NHSN, in 2005. And this web-based knowledge, uh, everyone in the States are sharing its infection rates uh, for certain types of diseases, certain types of uh, epidemics, uh, certain types of rates, uh, and they are quoting their rates uh, as an institution on that website. So in my opinion, it was a very uh, clear message that everyone has to share. Uh, one of the most important organizations also was the Food and the Drug Administration, uh, which is responsible for implementing monitoring and enforcing standards for the safety, efficacy, and labeling of all the drugs and biologicals for human use. And as, as uh, you can see, it is food and drugs. Uh, of particular interest to the infection prevention team are the FDA's activities related to food, uh, blood, and medical device devices, especially single-use devices and antimicrobial products and chemical germicides used with medical devices. Uh, the Environmental Protection Agency also involved in testing and use of hospital germicide drugs. Uh, what, we, what we used to discuss here is um, certain types of organizations that can affect and uh, uh, the practice of the infection control. Uh, one of the most famous nowadays are the Joint Commission, and I think everyone in the Middle East uh, wants to get their accreditation if not accredited. Uh, the Joint Commission started publishing minimal infection prevention and control standards for hospitals in 1953. And in 1976, uh, infection prevention and control programs became a specific requirement for accreditation by the Joint Commission. The Joint Commission standards for infection prevention are used by many institutions, including hospitals, uh, long-term care facilities, behavioral health facilities, home health agencies, uh, to establish a framework for an infection prevention and control program. Uh, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, which is called OSHA, uh, began its infection prevention and control activities in 1987 with the draft publication of blood board pathogen groups. So uh, the first and uh, the initial publication was about uh, Bloodborne uh, infections, uh, infections of the healthcare uh, providers uh, uh, by H hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV uh, from any exposure to blood and body fluids. Uh, OSHA also enforced other infection prevent, uh, prevention issues like tuberculosis uh, under the general duty clause uh, of the Occupational Safety and Health Act. OSHA standards focus on determining real health risk as a result of exposure to communicable diseases. All the previous organizations mentioned have three main purposes. Uh, the first of all is to protect the patient. Uh, second, to protect the healthcare practitioner, visitors, and others in the healthcare environment. Uh, accomplish the previous two goals in a post effective manner whenever possible. And this is uh, of particular interest to hospital managers and uh, leaders. So, if you want to go inside any hospital, any healthcare facility, you should be safe from acquiring infection. If you are not going to be treated, at least don't get another disease or infection. So, uh, one question now we need to ask ourselves, what do you need to establish your own program? Each institution or facility is unique, and uh, its specific needs must be considered when developing or reorganizing an infection prevention and control program. 
Uh, these factors include, but not limited to these factors, uh, purpose and size of your organization. First of all, you have to ask yourself this, why I am in the business? Why I built this business for? What is my goal? What is my purpose? And then after you answer the question of what's the purpose of your organization, please determine the size, determine the capacity that you can afford. Uh, another thing, case max children, adults, and elderly. All diseases are specialized. Uh, for example, are you going to treat all kinds of uh, infections, all kinds of diseases, uh, all kinds of uh, all fields of uh, health care or not? Or you are going to be specialized like uh, tertiary care, dental, practice only, uh, ambulatory care, uh, per unit, uh, maternity units, uh, pediatric units, or etc. Uh, uh, third, uh, types of the care provided. This care is health care, or food and beverage, or laundry, or even environmental services, and the types of care is very long list. Uh, lastly, and the, the last is food services. To so know that social engagement is a must. If you wanted to start a practice, um, APC in business practice, you have to have customers, right? So you have to have needs. So you have to ask yourself one important question. Does the community or the society need my business or not? And if your business is really needed in the society, please start establishing your scope of service. Uh, any program essential functions must contain uh, first, to obtain and manage critical data information, including surveillance for infection and risk factors. Uh, we start, as, as I said before, CDC was the first to establish the term surveillance for infection and risk factors. Surveillance means you are monitoring everything in the institution. You are monitoring the way uh, staff behaves. You are monitoring uh, the way the patients uh, react to uh, the health care uh, they, are, they are receiving. Uh, you are monitoring um, how health care providers uh, examine and treat patients and how, um, how health care providers educate the patients uh, and attract to them for their better sake. Uh, this doesn't mean by surveillance. Uh, the second one to develop and recommend the policies and procedures. Third, to intervene directly to prevent infections and interrupt the transmission of infectious disease. Fourth, to educate and train healthcare practitioners, uh, patients, and non medical caregivers, and most important, the people in the community. So, As we said, uh, these are the main functions of the program, but uh, they are essential functions, but of course, uh, not the only function. Uh, let's uh, revise again. So you have to survey, you have to monitor everything within the perimeter of your institution regarding uh, in, uh, promotion of health and infection. Uh, the second one to develop and recommend policies and procedures. Um, I think all of us knows what does it mean to have policies and procedures in place policies uh, and procedures are uh, the golden rule that all the institutions have to go by it and follow it. Uh, the third, uh, if you are monitoring something and you found a mistake that happens by anyone, please intervene directly and correct it on the spot. Don't wait to record and then correct. By that way, you are waiting for the harm to be happen. Uh, fourth one, education. Uh, education is a very important cornerstone of any infection control program. I cannot uh, give you a spreadsheet by steps one, two, three, four, and please follow these steps without educating you about how to follow these steps, how to perform uh, the processes and, uh, and the steps and the processes, and how to monitor yourself, and why do you need to perform these steps. Education is a very important cornerstone of any infection control program. And as I mentioned, for everyone, for the healthcare staff, paramedical, non-paramedical, medical, non-medical, and most important one is the 
customer of your healthcare institution, the patient itself. You have to educate everyone passing the door to or your institution. Uh, infection, infection prevention control program is uh, conducted by everyone. But the core element of the uh, IPC program is the IPC team. IPC team uh, should uh, involve the infection prevention list and the uh, infection prevention committee, uh, epidemiologist, occupational health or administration, uh, and there should be one person, however, who is designated as having full responsibility for the program, which is the IPC director. The role of the IPC team includes responsibilities such as the following uh, collection and analysis of infection data, uh, evaluation of products and procedures, uh, development and review of policies and procedures, because we are the ones, the one responsible for uh, setting up the rules and the facility or in the institution, whatever it is, healthcare or non healthcare, uh, consultation on infection risk assessment prevention and control strategies includes uh, activities related to occupational health, construction, emergency management, and etc. Uh, education efforts directed at interventions to reduce infection risk, uh, education of patients, and uh, Of course, these are the main uh, rules and responsibilities of the IBC. Uh, to complete the implementation of the changes mandated by regulatory accreditation, uh, licensing agencies related to the facts of business, of course, and for example, uh, uh, hospitals, we go by licenses from the Ministry of Health. But if you are starting a restaurant, you are totally directed to another licensing agency. Uh, application of epidemiological principles, including activities directed at improving patient customer satisfaction using implementation size. Uh, the main and the most important goal of any business working in the healthcare industry is to provide no harm. You can measure that by uh, simple satisfaction survey to the patient uh, through simple questions, uh, uh, examining or uh, trying to understand what is uh, their feedback on the care they receive. Uh, antimicrobial management, especially in hospitals and animal farms. Very important area for uh, antimicrobial stewardship program or any antimicrobial management. You have to develop these programs not only in hospitals, you have to develop them in the animal farms. Okay. For example, uh, if you are giving an antibiotic to an animal, a cow, or uh, a sheep or goat like that, these antibiotics are going to be resident in their blood and in their flesh. And at the end, we are receiving, we are eating these uh, animals. So these antibiotics are transformed. And this is why this antimicrobial stewardship programs must be uh, coordinated with the uh, all, uh, all institutions or all the ministries that are working with the uh, animals, uh, veterinary medicine, veterinary animals, and animal farms participation in research objects, uh, provision of high quality services and a cost efficient manner. Uh, I need to go back again to the rule of the IPC team to remind you, this or this only uh, essential elements, essential rules, not only rules, not the only rules. There are lots of rules and responsibilities to the IPC, but these are the most important rules and responsibilities. What do you mean by making the case? Now, we knew the infection prevention and control program. We knew uh, that uh, it, it, it must be implemented by a very efficient infection prevention team. But if you are in an institution, a healthcare hospital, a center, a medical center, or even an a restaurant, how do you make the case? How do you persuade? The managers that they are going to spend the money that they are truly in need of IPC program. It has been done through a study of efficacy of the nozzle common infection, it's called SANIC uh, project, found that one third of healthcare associated infections 
could be prevented by effective programs. One third, yani for example, uh, one hospital has accounted for uh, 100 uh, cases of pistol acquired infection per year. This study uh, determined that at least 33 uh, infections could be prevented by effective IBC programs. That included surveillance and practice. So, also, two thirds of the community acquired infections could be also prevented if effective IPC team in place. This we know from the latest WHO coronavirus uh, by, uh, by the late alarming signs from China. The project also noted that prevention of approximately 6% of HAIs offset or compensate or cover the cost of the program in a 250 hospitals. So making the case means what? You have to tell your manager how much you are going to save money for him, uh, how much um, it is going to, uh, how much, how, uh, what is the benefit of implementing IPC program money-wise. So it is important to outline the cost benefits of the program, uh, return on investment. And I think most of the one, most of, uh, most of the staff working in, in accounting knows what does this mean. ROI is a very important uh, scoring very important person that's used to describe how much you gain from any investment you are going to invest in. Another uh, parameter for making the case which is cost effectiveness and cost benefits as examples of decision analysis studies. Uh, effectiveness refers to the outcome of care or service. It can be expressed as the number of cases uh, of diseases prevented, uh, the number of lives saved, the uh, number of uh, dissatisfied customers. So this is what we mean by, by effectiveness. Uh, Cost-benefit analysis looks at outcomes in terms of cost. Uh, benefits are the then direct financial costs also are important in evaluating uh, the impact of infection prevention activities. These include this, uh, decreasing malpractice claims, uh, protecting employees from injury, assisting in patient safety efforts, and enhancing the organization. We have tangible and intangible assets uh, of the organization. Not everything is measured by money. Uh, reputation and image of the organization worth a lot of money and uh, deserve, deserves a lot of money. Uh, the patient safety uh, to do no harm to any patients, to, to prevent harm done to any patients as a result of any care provided in the hospital also has its price. How do you find, uh, how do you judge that an infection prevention control program is a quality one? Well, the interdisciplinary infection prevention team determines goals and objectives for the IPC program. How? By performing an annual risk assessment. This is the very uh, beginning of the IPC program. You cannot, you cannot establish your IPC program until you know what is the purpose of your organization, scope of service, and then you do the risk assessment. Uh, this should be based on the institution's strategic goals and institutional data and findings from the pre previous year's activities. Identification of high volume, high risk, and problem prone activities is an important component to the risk assessment. Setting priorities to help focus on appropriate allocation of IPC program resources. So, in brief, risk assessment. Uh, you do it to, to do what? What is the potential risk uh, that your institution is going to have in the coming year, in the future, like that? We used to put uh, uh, corona infection, we used to put next to the infections, and now we are putting corona infections at the top priority risk that we need to act to prevent infection from by corona. Uh, setting priorities uh, will help you to direct the most of your resources according to the top priorities. Uh, 
realistic strategies for surveillance and intervention, what is not measured, not improved. If you are going to monitor something, please give me a report about that monitoring. Uh, you are monitoring uh, the way that uh, uh, people uh, or your staff uh, wash their hands, how they wash their hands, does, uh, do they all wash hands or only 50% of them. You have to monitor and monitoring generates reports by numbers. So you have to measure their compliance. And when measuring their compliance, you can know your status if you if it is bad or good, need to be improved or need to be sustained. Uh, analyzing HAI rates, uh, healthcare associated infection rates, customer complaints and satisfactions, uh, aiming for zero HI rates and harms, educating staff regarding preventive strategies. So surveillance is not only a word of monitoring. It is a whole process and you uh, design your surveillance systems according to your needs and your scope of service. Uh, what I measure in the hospital, of course, is not what are you going to measure in a restaurant. Identify the opportunities for performance improvement. If you measure something and you found it not good, so it is an area of improvement you have to work on. Taking leadership role on performance improvement teams. Once you saw something not improving, you have to give resources to support it. Developing and implementing action plans that outline the steps needed to accomplish each objective. I, des I decided that in the beginning of the program, this objective needs a lot of resources, not uh, and lots of staff. Uh, how am I going to allocate these resources and these steps? Uh, finally, evaluating the success of action plans and accomplishing the goals and objectives of the infection prevention. Uh, as at, as uh, many uh, of us know, um, anything you are do, doing a good job in it, you have to do an evaluation at the end of, of the year. End of the year report is uh, an important report for infection control program. This is done by evaluating all uh, the objectives. Uh, are they really objectives? Uh, they are uh, reported really? They are accomplished or not? Um, and uh, the success rate of the program in preventing the risks identified at the beginning is high or not? And uh, after that, you came up by a, with a plan for the next year. Now we are going to go global, international perspective. IBC programs worldwide are organized around local guidelines and regulations to optimize quality health care and are influenced by various payer models. So the one who has the money is the one that control and shape the infection control program. Uh, we, we should ask ourselves that question actually if this really should be the rule or the perspective, if you have enough money, you will have enough IPC program, or IPC programs should be tailored according to every institution. And then you have to find any ways to, to fulfill the resources for that effective IPC. The International Federation of Infection Control produces a handbook that includes information on infection prevention and control programs. Uh, this international federation provides different models of IBC programs that fits for everyone. Uh, the WHO also recommends an appointed technical team of trained nursing and medical professionals who are responsible for organizing, implementing, and monitoring practice. Uh, who takes this assignment? In non medical development. Do you think none, or do you think there is one also takes the assignment? And for example, if you, if you go to a hypermarket, you can identify who is the infection, infection prevention practitioner in the supermarket. Uh, do we have, of course, if you got through a, nowadays, if you went through a clinic or if you went through a hospital, medical center, when you ask for who is the IPC practitioner, they will identify it by name. He will tell you go to uh, the office, go to the second floor, his name is Dr. Uh, uh, X, like that. 
But rather than that, you cannot find any infection prevention control programs anywhere. Uh, this is all the questions uh, uh, has to be answered from our objectives of the presentation. What is public health? Public health is defined as a field of study in which a person studies how health and disease affects community or society. So, if certain diseases are affecting society, it must be studied by the government. Certain promoters of health, like uh, healthy habits, um, uh, sanitary, uh, high sanitary, uh, sanitation, uh, hygienic uh, ways, hygienic procedures like that has to be measured. This is the era, uh, this is the specification of the public. And of course, it studies how government and entities or programs can best deliver the medical advice and treatments to a larger population. So, public health uh, concerned about uh, all the community health, not, not a specified. Uh, population in hospital like that. Public health connects us all because it is the science of protecting and improving the health of people and their communities. This work is achieved by promoting healthy lifestyles, researching diseases and injury prevention, and detecting and preventing and responding to infectious diseases. If there is any relationship between public health and infection prevention and control, well, actually, it is an, an interdependent relationship. The, the public health community is highly dependent upon the infection prevention and control community to serve at their eyes and ears to detect and report unusual events and threats, and also to work together to prevent and control infections within and between healthcare settings and inside the community. So it is a very good relationship, uh, like uh, the boundary one, uh, without infection control, you will never have a public health, and without public health, you will never have a good infection prevention measures. Now we're going to discuss uh, about the food service facility infection control. Uh, like, is preventing infections from food-borne pathogens enough? This is what's really the arcade about. Um, if you go to restaurants, if you go in uh, the kitchen of that restaurant, you will find that uh, all the staff must have, uh, like, like what is the health certificate. Uh, they are uh, for HACCP uh, certificate. They are killing mo mostly for the food poisoning outbreaks. And of course, it is not an, a small issue to, uh, to discard. No, it's a very important one. Food poisoning outbreaks can have far reaching and devastating effects on restaurants, grocery stores, uh, kitchen companies, food processors, and manufacturers, uh, and the public at large, because we are easily linked to them. Expiry, bad storage, like that. But what if uh, infections cannot be linked? Meanwhile, I mean, what? No GIT symptoms, only respiratory, dermatology, or even eye infections. Um, what we care about is um, infections resulting from food. So, the patient, if had any uh, diarrhea, uh, any uh, GIT symptoms, he will complain that he ate in that restaurant. But what if the person go already in a restaurant and uh, after two days uh, he got uh, a severe respiratory infection? Can you link that to a restaurant? I don't think so. So, it, they are only focusing on the food bite, but they are uh, totally ignoring other symptoms and other types of infection that could be encountered inside the restaurant like any other place uh, in the world. Infection control technologies help in the prevention of infections uh, of foodborne pathogens organisms that can put many individuals at risk of serious illnesses or death at food service industry at risk. Food safety hygiene audits. Uh, these types of audits has been uh, issued by the HACCP certified industrial hygienist and certified environmental infection control remediator, teaser, uh, provide independent expert evaluations of food service facilities 
to identify and document cause the effective remediation for potentially hazardous starch and preparation is ventilation and air quality control operating and uh, safety procedures, cleaning, decontamination of food manufacturing equipment and etc. So uh, as you see, um, we are trying to have uh, many IBC programs through providing certain certificates. And this food safety hygiene others serves as the IPC practitioner in the restaurant and should uh, be present uh, at every restaurant and every food manufacturing. Food service facility disinfection and remediation is a cure or treatment. Infection control technologies also decontamination and sanitation services provides a comprehensive solution for preventive maintenance as well as emergency decontamination for the food manufacturing and service industry. Uh, it provides advanced sanitation services and industrial cleaning uh, for food manufacturing, preparation, storage equipment, and facilities. With today's most advanced technology, like uh, dry ice blasting, cleaning, large area surface decontamination with mist, uh, broad spectrum biological disinfection, targeted delivering of composted uh, based uh, pollution spray. These are uh, technologies that uh, now we are, all the world is trying to adapt and to adopt uh, in their places and to, to go green. We need uh, to clean our environment, disinfect the surfaces that we are working on in the food industry, but not to harm the environment. This is why the issue from agencies like Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, so any disinfectant has to be approved by that agency in order to administer or to work with inside the hospital or a restaurant. Now we come for the current global situation. Uh, I think you will agree with me that IBC programs only found in hospitals and centers, and it's forced for accreditation. Means what? These programs, you follow them before the accreditation by two to three months, and the whole year you are not focusing on that IBC program. Second, uh, only truly applied before accreditation or inspection. It is not continuously done or performed. Uh, third one, Leaders don't pay the deserved attention to it, except in disasters. Uh, we do not spend money on uh, certain technologies, except if we are uh, in uh, danger. And who determines that? The manager of the company, the leader of the hospital, of course. Uh, we, don't, we don't need to spend that kind of money. We don't need of it now. Uh, they don't get to the idea that Prevention is better than cure. You, if you are doing, if you are implementing the latest technology, by that you are preventing infections from being happened, and that will save you a, get a, a good deal of money in the future. These courses are always limited, uh, and true experts who really care are rare. As you know that, you cannot ask for a new foldering machine, a new mist machine to disinfect the surfaces, to disinfect the washing area in the laundry, disinfect uh, the food preparation area. And uh, you, you, you will answer, no, disinfection is enough. Just clean the surface well and nothing will happen. This is an um, ordinary, uh, regular answer from a leader. No one wants the suspense, the really needed amount of money. Governments spend more money on entertainment arming rather than health and education. Who is responsible, guys? The current global situation we have now, by all its uh, adverse effects by, by all its bad decisions now has implemented all the group. All the group now uh, suffer from a very bad infrastructure in the medical field. You don't have enough beds to treat patients. You don't have enough ventilators to treat patients. 
uh, they don't have enough infection control practitioners to monitor the case, to intervene whenever and wherever possible at the proper time to prevent a disaster from being happening, to prevent a disease from being transmitted and spread throughout all the hospitals. Who do you think is responsible, you, me, or all of us? I think all of us are responsible. But who is involved in the process? Who is uh, put in responsibility in the process? First of all, the IPC experts. The IPC experts will try to allow you to um, direct the way that you should see, uh, point your eyes to the area of weakness. And this is the first, this is the first rule. You have to see what is your defect. And this is the rule of the IPC uh, What is the primary rule now? Uh, what you should do now, now, at that moment now, about IPC experts, you and me and everyone and, 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 and on the group, whatever you are working in a healthcare institution, whatever you are working in a restaurant, in a hypermarket, in a laundry, in a kitchen, in, in the cleaning and environmental services, what is your primary rule now? You have to make the case through the wall that health is the only matter that really counts before anything. We don't want to earn a lot of money and lose a lot of lives. Life is more important than money. All it needs to know how much money IBC programs will save. Uh, do you think this is the proper questions? Do you think this is what really the world needs to know? I think definitely this is the wrong question the world would ask. But how much lives will be saved and what are the kind of life quality we can offer to all Earth activities? This is the proper question. It's not about how much money you are going to save. I think we should all direct ourselves to the proper questions. How much lives will be saved? Now, after the era of COVID-19 uh, passes, and inshallah it will pass by its goods and bads, by its adverse effects and lessons learned, the world will totally be different after the era of COVID-19. All systems will be redesigned in all places and by all categories. Public transportation, airplanes, social distancing will be an appears nowadays. Uh, schools and the way of teaching, hospitals and the way of treating, restaurants and how to make and serve safely, sport clubs, lunches, cleaning, etc. Uh, social gathering will be monitored and moved. <laughs> I saw uh, like an alarming device, uh, like a watch when you wear it and uh, everyone in the facility wearing that watch. When you go near more than one and a half meters, it will alarm you like the sense of parking in your car. You are too near, please go far. <laughs> like that, it will be happening in the near future. There will be no door knocks anymore. Nothing to touch by hands. Fencers will be placed. The world is finally knew the proper way to wash hands. After a decade of trying to teach them how to wash hands, finally, they knew the importance of properly washing their hands. And not only washing your hands, but also with the cuff etiquette. But is it enough? Is it enough to know how to wash our hands or how to cuff properly and sneeze properly? I think not. What we don't know uh, are much more that we know. Uh, risks will never stop to attack that world. Uh, viruses will never stop or cease to happen. Uh, we, nowadays, we discovered one virus. There are some viruses, lots of viruses that we don't know about may emerge at any moment and do outbreaks like this corona at any moment. The, the, the question will be here, are we prepared for that or not? Are we prepared to face a virus like COVID-19 or not? And actually we should be prepared to, to face or, or to confront a more aggressive virus like than, than the, the corona. Governments will start to finance healthcare industry more than armies and entertainment. Do you think this will happen? Well, I hope so. Care for what really matters in life, not how to take lives and entertain in life. 
I have a book. Actually, it is a wish, a dream, or call it what you want. It is widespread IPC programs to cover all aspects of the company. Manage, qualify, passionate experts that have the knowledge, resistance, support, and they are given the authority to make things right and provide guidance and education to everyone. Everyone on earth must practice the eye infection prevention and control. At least you know the basics. So you are not uh, you are not required to go in depth of that science. But at least when I'm asking you, uh, do you clean and disinfect the surface? You should know how to clean and disinfect the surface. We are living in our homes. We are bringing groceries. Uh, we are bringing our work, our papers, our laptops, our our suitcases, everything we are bringing from the outside to inside our homes. So are we really protected or we are not protected at all? If you think my goal is a true essential urgent, top priority for you, uh, life and the lives of the ones you love, uh, so please help me globalize it. Have an IPC program designed exactly for your needs. By any means you can get and please start having it now. Thank you. That will be end of my presentation. I will give the floor to questions. شكراً جزيلاً دكتور عبد الرحمن أمتعتنا بصراحة البرزنتيشن كثير كثير فل يعني إنفورماتيف وما كت كل الأجزاء بدي أترككم يا جماعة إذا عندكم أسئلة تبون إياها على ال questions and answers section أو إذا تحبوا على chat box ما في مشكلة عشان الدكتور يجاوبها معنا عبين ما تقولنا كل الأسئلة بنشكرك دكتور كثير تعبناك وغلبناك وبنتطلع حقيقة للسيريز اوف اوف ترينينجز القادمة معك قديش رح تكون انفورماتيف وقديش رح نتعلم اشياء جديدة. ان ذا مين وايل عم نكتب اسئلتكم بحب ابلغكم انه احنا باجون عندنا تو نيو سيرفيسز واحدة موجهة للهيلث كير فاسيلتيز اللي هي مساعدتهم في وضع الانفكشن كنترول بروجرام تبعتهم تطبيقها واخذ الاكريديتيشن عليها والثانية موجهة for the non-healthcare providers يعني بنحكي عن مستودعات الأدوية والمصانع والهايبر ماركت والريستورانت كثيرة وفيها برضه بننشئ اي بي سي بروجرام بس مخصص لهي الفئات والشركات وبيساعدها انها هي تعمل انفكشن كنترول بروجرام كوست افكتيف متناسب مع البضاعة اللي هي بتتعمل فيها مش مش بسيط كثير لدرجة انه ما يهزم الأغراض ويكون مؤقت وشورت تيرم ومش كمان معقد كثير لدرجه انه هو يغلبهم ويخلي حياتهم صعبه ويخلي في صعوبه انهم هم يقدروا يطبقوه كل الفاسيلتي المتعلقه بالانفكشن بروجرام كنترول بروجرام الاي بي سي بروجرام رح تكون موجوده في اجون فاحنا رح ندير العمليه كامله بلس البروسيجرز والبروتوكول كل الامور هاي بالتعاون مع ال ومع فريقنا والاكسبرتس ومجموعه الاوتسورس فاسيلتيز اللي بتعمل لا خلينا نبلش بما انه بلش يكون عندنا اسئله خلينا نبلش بالسؤال الاول دكتور في عندنا سؤال من زميلنا محمد شناعه من القدس للصناعه الدوائيه بيحكي انه معظم دول العالم تتجه حاليا لتخفيف الاجراءات المفروضه رغم تحذيرات منظمه الصحه العالميه كيف ينعكس ذلك علينا في الفتره القادمه بص بص يعني احنا قلنا في الاول ان الكيرفيو ده اتعمل عشان بس الانفراستراكشر اوف ذا ميديكال فيلد از ويك اوكي سو اي دونت هاف تو اكسبت تو ماني بيشنتس ات ذا سيم تايم ذس ويل بي ا ديزاستر ذات ذات هابن ذات ذا وان هابن ان ايطاليا تخفيف الحظر ده لازم لازم يحصل سون اور ليتر وي ار نوت جوينج تو ستوب اور لايفز احنا مش هنفضل حابسين الناس في بيوت عمال على بطار لازم يطلعوا تو براكتس ذير لايف اذروايز ذا ايكونومي ويل دروب اند دروب كاتاستروفلي لازم يبقى عند الناس شغل لازم تقدر تشتغل وتمارس حياتها العاديه بس ذا واي ذي ار براكتسينج ذير لايفز ار جوينج تو بي توتالي تشينج لايك اي سيد سوشيال ديستانسينج انت دلوقتي مثلا كنت قاعد في في مكتب زميلك قاعد جنبك في المكتب اللي جنبك المسافه قريبه عدد المكاتب اللي موجود في الغرفه كان 10 دلوقتي هيبقوا اربعه 
عدد الكراسي اللي كانوا في الاتوبيس كانوا 50 دلوقتي هيبقوا 25 الطيران هيختلف كل حاجه هتختلف اول سيستمز ويل بي ري ديزايند انا مش عايزكم تقلعوا من الموضوع ان احنا بنعمل حظر او بنخف الحظر الموضوع مش كده خالص الموضوع ان حتى احنا عملنا حظر او لو ما عملناش حظر يو هاف تو ستيك يور اون بريكوشن لازم انت تهتم بنفسك شخصيا وبالدايره القريبه اللي حواليك لازم تو براكتس جود هايجين لازم تو فولو ذا ستاندرد بريكوشنز ايفري وير اند اني وير حاول قدر الامكان ما تجيبش انفكشن فروم اوت سايد يور هوم تو بوت ات انسايد يور هوم لو انت شغال يعني تخيلوا احنا كنا بنشوف ال الدكاتره والممرضات طالعين بالكوت سوت السكراب سوت اللي شغالين بيها في المستشفيات وماشيين بيها جوه السوبر ماركت لما لما وانس وي ريزد ذات ايشو احنا عملنا الارم للبابليك هيلث للمينستري اوف هيلث لل للاديوكيشنال اكتيفيتيز اللي موجوده صدر تعميم تماما ان ممنوع منع باتا ان حد يطلع لابس البالطو من بره المستشفى انت انت البالطو ده او السكراب سوت اللي انت شغال فيه ده جوه المستشفى بس ما ينفعش تاخده تروح بيه السوبر ماركت. So it is our responsibility if you, if you saw someone wearing a coat in a supermarket, please go directly and talk to him. Don't, don't be shy. It's your right. It's your life we are talking about, not his life. If he is ignorant, please educate him in a polite manner. I hope I answered. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, Doctor, there are Selma who tell you, Thank you, Doctor, for this presentation. And Rima, Rima Nshiwab, hello, Rima. But all finally, it will be the era of applying such concepts in our life in all its aspects, not on theoristical part of the industry. فشي يعني يعني. طبعاً. هي تفني على الكلام يعني. أكيد. وزي ما تقولك إحنا المهم إحنا يعني ال ال application of infection prevention and control programs used to happen in hospitals and medical centers only. If you go through a hospital or a medical center, and you go to the person who is doing infection control, they will be able to do it. But you can say, you went to the supermarket, and you saw that there was blood in the system of the hospital, and you saw that there was a fly. You go to the person. You tell me who you tell me. Who is the responsible person for the patient? In the hypermarket on the restaurant. They will direct you to what? To the uh, to the hypermarket manager, and this guy is totally doesn't know anything about infection control. So he will try to calm you down, clean, clean, clean. But this is not the issue. Cleaning is not the issue. Cleaning is the first step before disinfection. If you are cleaning enough, you are not protecting them. You have to disinfect after you clean, and this is this only can be understood if you are working in infection control. Yes. بدي 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 اثني على كلامك دكتور بدي اكد كمان انه القصه مش بس ديس انفكشن ونقطه، الديس انفكشن له اصول وله بروسيجرز ومواد يوافق عليها ولها مواصفات خاصه ممكن تكون كومباتبل مع البرودكت اللي عم نعمل له ديس انفكشن ممكن تكون. فالموضوع يعني مش هازاردلي مش عشوائي ذا هول سيستم تو بي امبلمنتد يعني انا هقول لحضرتك حاجه تخيلي مثلا جوه مستشفى انت بتلاقي النيرس بترش الكول سبراي وتمسحه على طول. وات ديد يو دو؟ كونتاكت تايم. نو كونتاكت تايم. نو كونتاكت تايم. نو كونتاكت تايم. فور اني ديس انفكشن تو هاف كنترول اند تو كيل ذا اورجانيزمز بكتيريا فيروسز اون ذا سيرفيس ات شود هاف كونتاكت تايم. اند ذس كونتاكت تايم بيعتمد على نوع الديس انفكشن اللي انت بتستخدمه. وات ايفر كان داين هايدروجين بيروكسيد افري وان ايفري وان اوف ذيم هاز اتس اون كونتاكت تايم. And the way yes. itself of cleaning, it's, it's a procedure, it's a system. It is not that difficult, but it needs education. Yes. هلا أنا كمان بحب أحكي نقطة كمان الكل عم بحكي فيها دكتور اللي هي موضوع ال ال اللي هي زي مداخل التعقيم هاي عم بيحطوا فيها UV lamps وعم بيحطوا فيها معقمات برشوها على الناس اللي بتدخل. فيش اي دراسه دبليو اتش او قالت هاي مش مش افكتيف ويمكن تكون مضره اساسا وما فيش اي معنى لوجودها لو بلس انه فكره اليو في على الجسم الانسان ولفتره زمنيه يعني في اشياء كثير ممكن يكون لها افكت كارسينوجينيك على المدى الطويل وما حدا عم بدرسها بالكلام وانا بس بطرح اي حلول بحط اي كلام وبس انه انا ام دوينج ستيب بس احنا ما بدنا تو دو ستيبس ونقطه احنا وي ونا دو ذا رايت ستيب 
والله انت عندك حق طبعا يعني من ضمن المشاهد اللي كانت بتدعو الى كثير من التساؤلات طريقه التعقيم في الشوارع يعني احنا احنا كنا بنتفرج على على هاجنبرج سايد ستريت ان ذا اي ستريت نوت فور ولا بدون اي معنى دكتور ولا ولا اعمل شيء ده حضرتك حضرتك كل اللي بنعمله لما بنعمل سبرينج هاجنبرج سايد ان ذا ستريتس ان ذا اير لايك ذات كل ده بيطلع فوق على الـ على الاتموسفير وبيبوظ لك الجو اكتر واكتر <تصفيق> either we have two types we have two types of disinfection uh, uh, these types of, we have two types of disinfection the disinfection is uh, either sprays and this is for surface okay and for that surface you should have a contact line and the fogging is present it should be contained in a closed place not in the open and it should also have a contact line yes وحتى اليو في اتني باك تايم احنا متعودين بالصناعه احنا بنستخدم اليو في كثير في وحدات المي برضه بس اكيد مش على البياني اكيد اكيد لا وبعدين مش مش هي هي الميزه بتاعت اليو في لايت عن الفوجينج ان انت بتستخدم المكان ايميديتلي افتر فينيشنج ذا يو في لايت يو كان يوز ات ايميديتلي بس الفوجينج باي اني اني فوجينج ماتيريالز انت لازم تسيب المكان شويه تهويه حتى بعد ما يطلع اذروايز يو ويل جيت ديسيز باي فروم ذا بيكر يس طبعا طبعا دكتور في عندنا كمان دكتور محمد شناعه بيقول بيقول لك شكرا ولنا وللمهندس محمد وللجميع ورمضان كريم الله اكرم يا محمد وفي عندنا دكتوره امنه من السعوديه بتحكي لنا ثانك يو فور ذا انفورماتيف برزنتيشن يا دكتور وبعرفش اذا في كمان اسئله بالكويستنز اند انسرز اي ثينك هيك كل الاسئله وكل التعليقات uh, لا في سؤال اكشلي من امنه كان وي هاف ا سيبر سيشن توكينج اباوت ذيس توبيك باي ديتيلز طيب انا راح احكي uh, نيابه عن الدكتور يا امنه uh, احنا راح نعمل سيريز اوف سيشنز راح يعملهم الدكتور راح يعمل سيشن عن المستشفيات سيشن عن الهايبر ماركت سيشن عن مستودعات الادويه سيشن عن الريستورانت فور انستنس اوكي حتى نقدر نغطي المواضيع من كل جوانب لا هذه السيشن بلس برنامج تدريبي متكامل رح نعلن عنه قريبا بسيرتيفيكيت آه للناس اللي رح تشارك ورح يكون مور ديتيلز وفي كل التفاصيل اللي انتم بتسمحوا لها فتابعينا امنه تابعينا على الفيسبوك وعلى اللينكد ان اي ثينك انت موجوده عندي على اللينكد ان بس تابعي صفحه ارجون ورح تنزل هاي الاشياء ان شاء الله رح ارجع اشوف الكويستشنز اند انسرز دكتور و... وفي عندي كمان سؤال شكرا على المحاضره وشكرا يا على السؤال فعليا ما في اي شركه عندها اثبات انها تستخدم مواد فعاله والمرجعيه مختلفه للاسف اللي هو انا الحكي اللي حكيناه انا وحضرتك دكتور يمكن حتى ناقشناه بالتليفون قبل واحد من تليفوناتنا انه انا حتى ما بعرف اذا هم عم بحطوا ديسنفكتنت ولا لا وحضرتك انت وقتها علقت عليه كثير عجبني قلت لي الديليوشن تبع الديسنفكتنت له اصول وله في نسبه معينه لازم اوصلها، مين عم بيراقب اصلا انه الديليوشن عم بيصير بالطريقه السليمه؟ تمام صح تمام هلا في عندنا كمان دكتوره اميره بتقول لك شكرا دكتور عبد الرحمن واه نسب مختلفه وعشوائيه تمام فعليا انا انا للاسف طالع عندي اسم الموبايل عن حضرتك 1 بلس 6 ف هو النسب مختلفه وعشوائيه صحيح تمام وما في اي اهلا كوثر اهلا كوثر كيفك شو اخبارك فعلا النسب مختلفه عشوائيه ما في اي علم من وراها ما في حدا عم بيدقق على السيتيشن ما حدا بيحكي عن الكونتاكت تايم وقديش مده الكونتاكت لازم تكون موجوده للاسف الموضوع عشوائي جدا جدا مش طبيعي احنا يمكن هاي التجربه بنتعرض لهاش كل يوم فايش طبيعي انها تكون عشوائيه عشان هيك احنا قلنا انه لازم يكون في مرجعيه قويه تكون مع الناس في عندي يمكن كمان سؤال او تعليق ثانك يو انجينير يارا في كمان سامسونج جالكسي بيقول لك ثانك يو دكتور عبد الرحمن uh, ما بعرف اذا في كمان اسئله او كمان اشياء uh, uh, بالشات بوكس اي ثينك عبد الله بيقول بيرفكت برزنتيشن والله وجودك معنا هو اللي بيرفكت يا عبد الله كثير انبسطنا فيك uh, شكرا جميعا <تصفيق> شكرا جميعا وشكرا دكتور عبد الرحمن نورتنا وشرفتنا وكثير انبسطنا في البرزنتيشن وكثير تعلمنا شكرا جزيلا ستيف سيف يا جماعه ديروا بالكم على حالكم اطلعوا زوجي وفردي فطوش <تصفيق> 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 <تصفيق>
اوكي صباح الخير ويعطيكم الف عافيه يعطيك العافيه دكتور وكيم اجون يعطيكم الف عافيه